This Reg has got the uh, wood off the back side of the flange there that we're going to hook the rear bumper up to. He's making it nice and smooth now so it'll release easier. Reg is uh, putting his tape down now. He's got the yellow tape down and he's got the blue tape on top of it. Uh, next step will be to put at least three coats of wax on it and he'll spray it with his wax release. PVA. What, what is it? PVA. PVA stuff on it and we'll have to wait for about an hour for it to dry and then we'll proceed from there. Now uh, it's got uh, four coats of wax on the outside exterior here ready for uh, Reggie to PVA it. Uh, the blue tape I talked about before is just to protect the yellow tape. You can see some yellow tape over there, a little bit of it there. Uh, we wanted to protect it so we didn't get any of this PBA uh, spray on it or the wax on it or epoxy so when we go to seal the bag it'll stick. Okay, here goes Reg. He's just bringing the PVA on it right now. Uh, he gets it all sprayed, which won't take too awful long. We're doing a small section there. It will take about an hour for it to dry. Then we'll be ready to start putting the, uh, the layer of epoxy and then fiberglass. There you can see uh, how nice and shiny it is. Reg has got the PVA sprayed on it. Real nice coat, real nice thick, hopefully heavy coat so that It'll peel off real easy. Uh, this week we we're fortunate enough to have Reg out with us again. And uh, so far we've accomplished that we got both rear fenders molded on in place right now. We have to leave them on so that we could pull the back half. And you can see that we have a board right there that we will mount the back half of this fender onto it. We had to do this in order for us to be able to pull it off because of the curve on it. And then this side you can see where the board is taken off and we have it all ready to go. Our PVA is finally dry and now we got Reg is putting on the uh, coat of the epoxy so that we can put the first coat of uh, fiberglass on. We'll try to take a short picture of each one as we get to it. He got one layer of uh, the epoxy on it now. He's putting the S glass, which is a real nice and thin type fiberglass that will give us a nice smooth finish to the inside of our mold. Reg is still working on uh, putting this thin S fiberglass on, S glass they call it. Uh, it takes a little while. It's easier to work with than the stuff we'll be working with later, but this is the crucial glass to get on. We want to make sure we have a nice smooth finish when we get done. Reg got at least uh, two to three layers of the S glass on. Uh, now he's going to put at least three to five layers of this chop chop strain mat. Chop strain mat. Thick fiberglass. This mesh is just a little bit harder to work with than the other stuff. It doesn't really want to lay down on you like it, like the other stuff did and, until you can really get it saturated with the epoxy. So it takes a little bit longer and a little harder to work with. It's got some little fuzzy ends as you can see. Little fuzzy ends as you can see sticking out past the panel here that we will cut off because if we don't cut them off when you vacuum seal them down they will come around a corner make it very difficult to get the form off. And you have to make sure when you're doing this uh, we got about three to four coats on there areas of this. You have to make sure you keep working kind of rapidly because uh, it will start to generate heat and you want to try to have your bag on it before it starts 
generating too much heat. Now we put on a, another plastic called a breather plastic. It lets the uh, air come through to this uh, pad he's putting on now, which is kind of like an absorber that will uh, hold the epoxy as it comes through make a real nice sheet. You can see we could use some uh, little yellow or blue tape to hold this up in place. Uh, it won't affect anything so it's quite alright. And he's fixing the place now to put the vacuum port tape on just to hold it in place. Once he gets that in place, why well, then we'll be ready to put the vacuum bag in place as soon as we peel the yellow tape. Back to you in a second. Very important when you're putting this bag on that you get a nice seal. You can't have anything between the plastic and that yellow tape or else your vacuum will not work and you won't get the pressure you need on it to make yourself a nice form. Very important part. Reg has worked very hard at making sure this bag is sealed around here. Now he's making sure that it's going to stretch around everything just right. And then in a minute or two, we'll insert the port I will show you that when we're doing it. We got the cord in and got the vacuums on and it's sucking the plastic down. Reg is folding it in, pushing it in to make sure that it's forming like it's supposed to. Looks like it's working rather well. Only got five pounds of pressure on the pump right now, but the bag isn't down where it should be yet. We got 23 pounds PSI on this vacuum bag right now. Reg is going around to see if he can find any leaks or anything going on it. You know, you want as much vacuum as you can get on it. Uh, we are vacuuming this whole rear fender because we had to leave that piece on so it is drawing the 23 psi which is pretty reasonable well we could live with that you always want it up to about 30 but we could live with that this is our gauge this is a hookup we made we got it hooked up so that we could uh, hook more than one line to it. We got hooks so we can hook three lines to it if we need to to vacuum three parts. We haven't been uh, quite quick enough to do that yet. But uh, eventually, maybe tonight we'll have another rear finger done and we'll be able to hook it on the same line. Okay, I, I did this once before, but I don't know if I pushed the right button or not, so we'll try it again.